Houston on June 12, 2017. Ms. Perino, could you please take a roll? Okay, Simmons? Present. Nelson? Present. Griggs? Here. Blackman? Present. Paredes? Here. Huckabee? Here. Four. Here. Four is present. We're going to move through the agenda. The second item, open the floor to public hearing regarding transfer of funds to the Education and Operation and Maintenance Fund. May I please have a motion to open the floor? For this discussion, we'll roll this first, I guess second, and Dr. Gray is second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Karina, can you do a roll call? Please? Okay. Briggs? Yes. Paredes? Huckabee? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Simmons? Yes. Blackman? Yes. Four. Yes. The motion is passed. Ms. LaBella. Good evening. Lawrence Moore. Thank you. On, okay. This is a plan transfer fund that we had determined we were going to do uh, when we, we created last year on this current fiscal year budget that's now coming to a close. In the environment where property values were declining, the tax rate, <coughs> we are held under the tax cap detail in total. However, within the tax levy itself, we are also held to maximum allowable rates within funds. So in order to capture your entire levy, which was the whole one point eight CPI, uh, we couldn't put it into the areas where we absolutely needed the money, which was really the end on in the LM fund, because we're going over the statutory rate funds. So instead we levy the money in the transportation fund, and now we're going to transfer it for, from the transportation fund into the education fund and the operations and maintenance fund, where we actually need the money for operations. Okay. Um, we're now starting to see with this year's reassessment. We're going to start seeing the property values go up, the tax rate will start coming down. We should, we'll start seeing some room in the areas where we actually <coughs> want to levy the money so that we don't have to start moving from transportation back in. It's really a function of just how the levy process works. We'll go over that in significantly more detail when we do the levy. Um, we'll present in October for your adoption of the levy in December. But until then, that's what we're doing now. Because process on just moving phones where we need them for operations. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions from the audience? Anybody, any of our guests have any questions?
divisions who competed. The competition was broke down into four events. The events were event to math, multiple choice, short answer, problem solving, ken ken, and logic. So this is our, our Division A team. Division A was made up of first and second graders. We had Caitlin Chong, Michael Abara, um, Isaac Hernandez, Max Cuevas, Bennett Mathis, Aiden Ladka. Um, these students met weekly in practice and they were coached by Mrs. Malone. I saw a couple of these students here. If you would stand up. So Michael and I saw Caitlin and we can Thank <laughs> you. 
And I need the math ball students, all of them. Come on. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs>
two solutions to this. So we put that to 70 either this way.
you're better than that.
do a weekend executive session for about, I'm saying a half hour. We'll see. Right, regular session. Ms. Marino, can you please do a roll call? Okay. Huckabee? Yes. Or here. Nelson? Here. Simmons? Present. Blackman? Here. Paredes? Here. Briggs? Here. Court. Here, and we are all here, and the court is present. We will return to our agenda items. We are in action item number six, approval of Western Avenue Pensacola. May I please have a motion? Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Smith would actually like to speak first. Yes. Good evening. We have, I'd like to introduce you to our recommended candidate, uh, Dr. Lisa Delacqua. We had a wonderful process to hire this principal. We had incredible people. We had candidates from all over the suburbs, all sitting principals, with a lot of experience and a lot of success in their background. We had round one with teachers, actually, Mr. Christopher Dog was there. Uh, we had parents, we had board members, we had administrators. We had some spirited conversation about the most effective person we would want to see lead Western Avenue School, and we generated a list of finalists that we brought back to the administrative team. When they came back to the administrative team, they made a presentation on a piece of data from Western Avenue, and also gave us a presentation on how this will set up an effective climate culture. Dr. Delacqua was by far um, the most ready to join the team. She shared not only through the interview process, but certainly just in the conversations and the presentations, her incredible knowledge about the structure. She has a very clear understanding about how students learn, about how teachers teach. And if you can clearly identify those two things, you can deliver success for, for school and a community. Uh, she's really focused on rigor, and she will challenge our students who need additional support at the lower end of the spectrum we also the ones that need additional support at the upper end of the spectrum as well. Uh, we are excited to make this recommendation to the Board of Education. We feel that uh, Lisa will be a really strong addition to the team and frankly a great addition to the Flossmore community. So we wholeheartedly recommend her for this position. Hope you will uh, approve that recommendation. May I please have a motion to approve Dr. Smith's recommendation for Western Avenue principal? So moved. Second, Ms. Huckabee. Dr. Briggs. Second, Ms. Marino, can I have a roll call, please? Briggs? Yes. Simmons? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Blackman? Yes. Perez? Yes. Huckabee? Yes. Fourth? Yes. And the motion has been approved.
one audience member who has signed is Christine Marks. Hey, everybody. Hi. Uh, I know it's on the agenda this evening. You've got approval of the Prevailing Wage Act coming before you. And I ask that the board president might tonight share the background of the Prevailing Wage Act with the board and with the audience so that everyone understands what it is. And then I hope the board acts in the best interest of the community and the district taxpayers to be unanimous and more votes to this. But additionally, and most importantly, you know, I'm here this evening to show my respect and my appreciation for Dr. Mark Pop. Um, not much is expected of an interim superintendent, so to say you exceeded expectations wouldn't really be polite or kind or connected. Um, you showed yourself to be a man of great integrity, insight, and warmth, and you demonstrated genuine concern and compassion for students, the families, and the staff of District 161. And it's sad to say goodbye. But I know that your great talents will be recognized in your next adventure. And I wish you nothing but the greatest success. Let us know how God wants to keep in touch. Thank you so much. It's actually been a pleasure being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so next on the agenda is superintendent's report, but Christine Marks actually just did an awesome segue because I have a, a non-agenda item that I didn't know I wanted to actually personally thank you as well. So you know, I, you know, I get teary-eyed as everybody knows <laughs> last week at the um, graduations. So I promise to not do that, but we did want to give you a small token of our appreciation because absolutely thoroughly enjoyed having you be a part of our district and you have done such amazing amazing work when i think about where we were before you started stop me because i you gave me that here it's so when i think about where we were we on your day one and where i think about where we are now we are light years away from where we were and you have done such an incredible job of creating a great culture and climate and, and making it fun to sit here and, and you know we laugh and talk about it, oh, it's like, you know, your dog on a treadmill and like not. I mean, so we, we, we thank you. We, your, your commitment and your investment in our children and our staff and the board is just, it's been invaluable. So we thank you and we just wanted to give you a small token. Thank you so much. Much of that time was talking about teaching and literature and things that were necessarily on the agenda. And uh, but I think that it really informed the, the culture and climate of this district. And uh, I was I was thinking about this in terms of uh, some of the things that I always and I mentioned this last year with, with uh, what I was thankful for our teachers uh, as teaching our children integrity. And I don't think that I've met anyone uh, professionally that I've worked with who espouses that integrity as much as Dr. Pop. Um, and when you think about this in terms of being integral to a task and to absolutely being driven by the mission and the vision that is in front of you and, and really showing no signs at all of having any, you know, looking at some you know, personal game but really focusing on the organization and, and what's best for everybody, I, I think you can espouse that. And, and certainly on a personal level, I think that um, one of the things that I have, you know, really noticed about Dr. Pop is the uh, the degree to which he is always outsourcing uh, compliments, outsourcing credit for a job well done, and uh, and assuming all responsibility for things when they're not going well. Um, and that, that has been a 100% uh, uh, reliability where it comes to your reliability. And I always knew that. No matter what, you were the person I could always rely on. Uh, and I knew that very quickly. And uh, I just want to say thank you. And when I think about my legacy here, um, I am very proud to say that I worked with Dr. Powell. Um, Dr. Mike Pop, he came into our district at a time of great transition and some might say upheaval. He's handled circumstances that at times have been very trying. He has helped oversee and facilitate the search for two building principals and other administrators and educators. 
He's consistently sought to ensure student interests were always put at the top of the list of considerations during any deliberations and decision-making exercises. He's communicated in a clear and thoughtful manner. He has personified grace under pressure and has never wavered, not once, from his goal of making District 161 the very best it can be, even during his short tenure. I told him this privately, and I'll now say it publicly, I offer my unconditional recommendation and support for Mike to any school district who wants a proven leader, a great communicator, and someone who works in the sole interest of the student experience. I can say without reservation that we have been incredibly fortunate to have had Mike Pop for a short time as our educational leader here at Flossmoor 161. Thank you, Mike, and best wishes in your future endeavors. You will always have friends here in Flossmoor. Thank you. Now, on to your superintendent's All right, thank you. We have a long agenda, so I will be brief. Uh, I, I, I'll start with where I'm going to end. Um, I, I greatly appreciate the opportunity to have served here. Uh, the time went by incredibly, uh, very, very quickly. Uh, I wish, I wish you, the board, I wish the staff, the administrative team, all the best uh, in serving the needs of every single student. It was uh, when I hear stuff like Dr. Smith just said about our, our new principal that uh, she's not just focused on one group of students, but all groups. So she looks at you know students who are not meeting a standard, and how do we, what intervention do we need to, to raise them up, and students who are meeting the standard, and how do we work to uh, increase their learning and increase their achievement. That's exciting. That's a focus on every student. Uh, and so I wish you all the best as you continue your service. Uh, on the business side of things, thanks everybody for being here tonight. Uh, our next meeting will be a, uh, a special board meeting instead of just a committee of the whole. We have some uh, business to take care of, kind of some end of the year wrap up pieces. Uh, it's not an incredibly long agenda, but uh, I'm asking that we make that a special meeting so that we can uh, take care of a little bit of action. Um, one of the items on there, uh, it, it, this year, uh, every year at this time, we ask uh, that the board appoint a representative to speed, and you've got that position currently, so we'll, we'll have that on the agenda, and, and the speed uh, uh, has changed the bylaws to ask for two members, so, so we'll be looking to, to fill those spots uh, at our next meeting. Uh, and administratively, we'll also have two members, um, and both will have voting rights. In the past, only the primary did, but uh, we've changed those rules a little bit uh, at speed. Um, I wanted to say thank you before I get too far. This, uh, last Monday, we had our commencement ceremony at the high school, and there were uh, a tremendous amount of staff members who worked really hard to make that a great event for our students and families. Uh, I thank our friends also at, at the high school, and I thank the board for your participation in the event. Uh, I think it was very successful for students and families. Uh, our student speakers really uh, epitomized uh, the success that happens in this district. Uh, it, was, it was outstanding to hear their voices, uh, and, and I think it gives you, uh, looking back, you can say, wow, great things are happening, and, and I think moving forward, you're gonna see more of the same. Um, and finally then, uh, in that, that meeting, uh, our next meeting that uh, we'll make a special meeting, uh, Dr. Smith is going to be uh, administratively presiding uh, alongside our president, uh, as I will be leaving the district uh, this Thursday afternoon. So again, I've truly enjoyed my time here, truly <coughs> appreciate the opportunity. And uh, Dana's got my number, I think a lot of you have my number. Uh, we are we continue to work on transition activities and that'll continue for as long as uh, as long as is needed. So if he knows how to get hold of me, I'm going to be fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda, <coughs> approval of consent agenda items. Items A through H. May I please have a motion to approve the consent agenda items? Yes. Graves? Yes. Blackman? Yes. Paredes? Yes. 
Has to be? Yes. Four. Yes. And that's what she's been approved. The next item, Board of Education Retreats Agenda. That's a pretty... So this is a discussion item only. Uh, no action was requested to the board. Early in June, we sent out a couple of potential dates. So we do have the opportunity to work with either our lawyer, John Fester, on any issues if you want, uh, some training is provided for typical uh, legal retainer. But also if you want to do any work with the Illinois Association of School Boards, um, with governance, communication, all these different pieces. Between the 23rd and the 30th, any people have any number of family conflicts. So we'll go back to the well on finding a date for us to get together. But I wanted to start building, if possible, the initial topic list, that way we can get the different experts that we want to bring in and just determine how we want to formulate those conversations. So there's a draft of a list on your board report. Obviously focusing on norms, vision and goal setting for, for the board, how we want to work together. Effective communication with the community, which is something that's always important to us. Gathering information for decision making. Uh, focusing on the strategic plan, not only its development, but its effective measurement, and then how we want to self-evaluate our own work. Our group. Are there other areas, other things you want to add or correctly strike from this list? And again, this is not my idea. You can think about this tonight and come back together until the retreat. It's not the final piece. Just want to be very thoughtful because I know your time is very important if we're going to have another meeting. We want to make sure that we are laser focused. I don't have anything that I want to add to the list, but I just want to make a comment that I think um, having a board retreat is actually a very great idea, and hopefully we can find a date that works for everyone before school starts. It would be great to do that, um, especially since we have several new members on the board, and it's just, you know, there's a lot of new stuff opportunity for us to get together as a board and, and uh, plan our, our year together. So hopefully we can find a date before school starts. I'll send out a few more. And, uh, I believe that both of these were Fridays. So try to mix it up a little bit to find out maybe there's a day of the week that's better than not everyone else. We'll send those out and if we can find one that everyone agrees, we'll get moved. The next Item on the agenda, board committees. It's for discussion only, so there's no action needed at this time. Um, the board committee, what I was hoping to have is a discussion. I think, um, you know, this was something that has come up at least for the past couple of years that I've been on the board, the idea of having committees. There's been a lot of questions about, you know, do we need a committee of the whole, and do we have committees? You know, well, you know, a lot of board members feel like um, they actually want to be part of a lot of the discussion and information that is shared. So this is not an attempt to get rid of the committee of the whole, but it is an uh, attempt to um, provide opportunities for us to um, focus in a little bit more on um, areas that we probably we could give a little bit more attention to. Um, it also provides an opportunity for board members to um, uh, use their own strengths and, and what they bring to the table around whatever the topic might be. It could be finances, it could be reading engagement or whatever it might be. But I thought we would have a discussion tonight about um, what those committees should be. I think, you know, one or two to start out with, you know, in the laundry list of committees, but, you know, what do we think are sort of hot, um, in, you know, issues that require a little bit more, um, attention from the board that it might make sense for us to create a committee around right now. <clears throat> so it's open for discussion, thoughts, questions, concerns, uh, hot issues. I mean, what comes to my mind, is, is, especially since um, budget time, um, I think we have finance people on the board. It's one of the things that I've seen John get excited about over the past couple of years, finances and budget stuff. Um, so we might want to have a committee um, 
that looks more closely at the budget versus having every member on the board, for example, um, community engagement, PR, that piece, you know, could also be one that we focus a little bit more attention on. But completely open to ideas and suggestions about what those committees should be. So Michelle, I, I, I think that's a great idea, and I also think of If we formed that, that we could you know, have conversations with the superintendent and with the administration about how the board could best support that. Anybody else? I would say then, um, <clears throat> in the same vein of the finance or budget, then one that looks at curriculum or teaching, teaching and learning, that type, uh, those types of decision making issues that are really focused on achievement okay. Anybody else? Thoughts? Seems like enough for now. Seems like enough <laughs> for now. I, I would agree. I mean, and obviously, if we go this route, and these are the three that we um, formulate, I mean, we'll have to, you know, create some sort of structure around. I mean, obviously, this is you know, what does it mean to have a committee that looks at curriculum and teaching and instruction? Like, how can we be supportive of, you know, Ms. Crawford um, um, and, and all the stuff that, you know, all the curriculum revamping that will be happening over the next few years. I mean, this could be an opportunity um, to meet with a smaller committee first before it needs to come before the board for, well, I mean, but we have to work that out. Um, one of the other pieces we have to work out is, you know, people, I know that um, some districts that have committees also have community participation on these committees, so we would have to decide, do we want that, what should it look like? My suggestion right now would be um, that we probably keep it board members until we have figured out what that structure and process will look like before we open it up to 
then if we decide to open it up to community members, but I think right now it should just be for John. The committees are open meetings, so we can always have community involvement in the same way we have it in our place. Um, just making sure that you're contemplating the potential for creating multiple committees instead of committee in the whole structure. So the idea is not to put a handful of people on committees and go out and do meetings and then come back to a committee in the whole and do the entire group and then do a regular business meeting, correct? That is correct. Thank you. Yeah. The idea would be um, that the committee has reviewed and approved and then come back yep. with the recommendations of the full board and then the full presentation would not be needed. You, you, um, I think everything you're saying is is right on track. Uh, you'll have to come up with a structure of dealing with uh, policy and uh, even policy personnel, something like that. But uh, that still can be done in your, you know, as a as a group. But uh, that would just be one area that, um, as Dr. Smith goes through, and uh, I, I know we did a lot with policy over the last hundred days, but. Uh, but there's still some more to do. You just have to figure out where that fits. Okay. okay. Just one, a couple of observations. Do maybe this is putting the cart before the horse? But would you envision the presentations on each agenda item being offered by the chair of that committee, or by administrators or staff? I, I think we can discuss it. If my, I would envision it being offered by um, the committee chair, but not an actual pres. I mean, your the presentation would be that um, the committee has met and, and has discussed, and you are bringing it up for approval. But I wouldn't expect the committee chair to actually give a full proposal. Um, and then I think if it was Ms. Crawford, for example, if it had additional questions, then we could cover it. But I, I don't envision there being a, a proposal, um, but I'm also completely open. I have not thought this through from A to Z, so what do others think? Pros and cons to the chair of the committee bringing it forth for approval versus having district staff giving a full-on presentation. And the, the reason why we went to the how structure originally was because we entered a time on the board where there was a lot of turnover. We had at least three, if not four, new board members. And we thought it would be a beneficial way for the new board members to really become inundated with everything that was going on. And then the intent was, after a year, to break it into committees. But Part of what that requires is a lot of trust amongst the board that everybody's doing their homework in their little respective areas and they're bringing back recommendations that are well thought and well fed. And I, I'm not sure that ever that existed in the way we hoped it would. Um, so that might also be something we consider is maybe we keep the current structure for, given all the changes that have gone on in, here and at the administrative level, six months or something like that and then re-engage and maybe break it apart at that time. That might also give, as we start with three, that might also allow some sort of test pilot how it's working out so that um, you can think about adding things as well, right? No, I think that's a great idea. I think, you know, we will re-evaluate this over, um, you know, six months or I mean, we can put some time right to it, but definitely before some midway point in this whole year, we can reevaluate it. We might decide, uh, you know what, we actually don't like the committee structure. We want every, everybody wants to be a part of it, or we might decide this actually works well and it's more efficient and a better use of our time and our talents, and let's do it. So I think that's a great idea. Any more discussion? We will now move to action item C.
approval of additional assistant principal at Parker Junior High School. Sure. Is it good to have more to sort of work with? I don't know if you have a team, but certainly Dr. Bob as well. We um, talk often about the best way to support our most important assets, which are truly our students and our teachers. So reflect on the size of Parker Junior High, the expect expectations that we have for the outputs of that building, not only in certainly instructional, but also um, cross-curricular and, and other opportunities for students that may not be possible before. It really begins first with effective and really high quality teachers, and then with um, assistant principals and principals to support them at a very high level. Uh, as I look at the structure of Ann Parker, it is, in my opinion, out of a little bit of balance when you look at the type of supports that teachers will need and the coverage expectations that we have uh, for building administrators in a school this size. Um, high school is smaller than this with more administrators because of the importance that's placed not only on forming those student relationships, but also with providing teachers with feedback, being available for families, and being available available for students. So our recommendation would be to add one full-time assistant principal. You can see the chart that would bring us to two assistants, uh, one principal, um, and currently there are two deans in that position. Really cool. We have a motion to approve the additional assistant principal at Parker. So moved. Ms. Lefferty. Ms. Lefferty, second. Ms. Greeno, can you take the roll call?
um, and also had supports for our high achieving students to be able to take them to the next level. Technology applications for students and parents as well. Um, both programs also had multiple layers of assessments, both formative as well as um, leading into some summative assessments that we could use on a district basis to be able to measure um, homework and the additional practice that we need. Um, specifically, <coughs> excuse me, for CPM, something that we're really excited about is that there's a separate textbook for CPM called the Integrated Program that will allow us to have our free algebra course at the junior high level, which we will be able to keep sacred for um, some, right now there's a few sixth graders who will be taking it, but six, mostly seventh graders who really need to start working on the free algebra skills so that we can make sure that they're ready for algebra one honors and junior grade. So that would be really key to be able to have a program that separates the free algebra material for those students. Um, and then I just wanted to talk a little bit about the connection between Bridges and CPM. So Bridges will be for K through five, and they will transition to CPM, our core connections, and sixth through eighth grade. This was the same model that Lake Bluff School District was using. Again, the programs are sister programs, um, so they're using the same math vocabulary. So um, the same terminology, are they using sum versus add? Are they using subtract versus minus? So the, the programs are aligned, but then they also have the same alignment to the standards. Um, and we also talked about, in addition to choosing programs that are aligned with each other, doing some things at the fifth grade level towards the middle of the school year to make sure that te the fifth grade teachers are starting to infuse some of the CPM material into their daily practice so that students get to sixth grade and are prepared better. Yes. Did you, so did you say that the uh, we, we do an awareness of the transition for kids who are say in third grade or fourth grade who have been using the previous math um, academic vocabulary that they will transition into the, the bridges academic vocabulary such as sum and add. Right. So what I'm saying is that the two programs use the same math vocabulary. So when students. Um, the goal is for students across the district that one school isn't teaching students to use the word sum right, okay. and one school is using a different term for it or one classroom even with, uh, within a building. Um, both programs would provide a consistent amount of vocabulary. Okay. I guess part of my question is do, uh, are we expecting students to know this new program right away or is there... Yeah, it's going to take time um, and there will be an expectation that every teacher and across all of our schools uses the program next year and uses it with fidelity. Um, and we will be doing the monitoring of that, um, but it's going to take time for us to see um, the results of that and to see students using that common vocabulary okay. as well. Um, so I just wanted to, can you get those slides? I just wanted to highlight a few things. While she's getting those up, I will talk about just some additional ongoing challenges that we are aware of. One being that this will take time. None of it um, will sort of spark overnight and it's going to take a commitment and consistency um, on the part of the administration, both at the district level and at the school level, and a commitment from our teachers as well as our parents and our board of education to make sure that we're being held accountable for using the program with fidelity. Um, we know from learning from Lake Bluff School District that we'll definitely need to do a lot of parent outreach and support. Um, it's sort of a new math and making sure that all of our parents are under understand and have the resources to be able to help their students. Um, and so I'll just talk through, that's very hard to see, but I hope I will do my best. Um, Kathy, can you go up to the second slide? Actually? Yes. So in terms of pricing, I wanted to give a little bit of clarity on some of the bucket items that we're paying for. So teacher, things that are highlighted in blue here are the things that would be recurring expenses. So these are consumables. These are student workbooks um, that would need to be replaced every school year. The other things are um, one-time cost. Um, again, professional development would also be consumable because we need to make 
decisions at the end of the next year on how we want to proceed with the um, <coughs> following year. Um, teacher materials, student consumables, again, they give us a price range for that. I base all of the numbers on enrollment projections for next year um, with students transferring in or uh, students with IEPs coming in, that number may will go up, so we should be aware of that. Um, each of the programs has an intervention program that we feel is important to make sure that we invest in. And then um, professional learning, um, included in the cost in your board packet is professional development uh, for both programs that would give us 16 days of on-site PD, and we would be utilizing our school improvement planning days as well as our PLC, our professional learning communities, time, community times, and our cross Toronto universities to um, learn from the experts at Bridges and CPM. And Tech, you can go to the next one. Talk a little bit more about PD in a second. Um, so for CPM, again, teacher materials in blue, the cost for student consumables, um, and then again, professional learning, uh, for this program uh, is a, an additional eight days on top of the 16 um, for Bridges. And then the last slide, that's really hard to see, but I will read it. Um, professional development, so we'll kick off our summer PD uh, with training dates for Bridges for teachers on July 27th and 28th as well as August 3rd and 4th, that would be in-district full day trainings for teachers for both sets, and that would be presented by um, the Bridges experts at the NAC Center. During those PDs, teachers will work on unloading and getting started, mapping out what their sequence will be for the first half of the school year, digging into what everything means and working through some of the lessons together. For CPM, I will have additional training dates for August 3rd and 4th, also on-site school day trainings um, and doing the same thing. And then during the school year, we will take the same approach as Lake Bluff School District, which we really liked their model, where um, in order to reduce uh, any loss of instructional time, the consultants and the experts on the programs are pushed into professional learning time and school improvement days to work with teachers at the start of every unit in small groups and work with teachers at the end of every unit to reflect on how it went in small groups. So we feel like that would be much more effective than teachers sort of um, having mass professional development with everybody <coughs> in the room. We feel like the small group sessions will help us get as much from the experts as possible. Any questions on those items? Just here. I'm just curious, mm -hmm. um, do you know why the student consumables rate is so much different for Bridge than it is for CPM? Yes, if you go back up, um, Bridges has $1080 to $18, and that depends on the grade level. Um, CPM is $2 per consumable. Two things, CPM is just a more affordable program. They don't make it for elementary. It's only made for sixth through eighth grade. Um, the other thing is that the Bridges workbook is for half a year. So that workbook is really thick, and then in the second half of the school year, the students get another one, which is why it's more costly. The CPM workbook um, is thinner, and the students do a lot of a lot more handouts and download th things that they download as well. Do you happen to know? Um, I was trying to add it up, but I'm just curious. Do you happen to know what the total dollar amount is um, that we actually will be budgeting for? That that's Angle. I mean, you have the three. Mm -hmm. Three ninety six includes a lot of the mm -hmm. uh, one time costs. So, how much of, do you know? How much of the three ninety six will actually be annual costs? The only things that will be annual costs are the student consumables and professional development. I would anticipate that um, our professional development, uh, what we're taking on for, for PD 
is going to be much heavier in the first two years than it would be in subsequent years. I would not expect to need to pay this much for professional development in the following years because our people will be internally trained, our coaches will be more trained. Um, but after that, the only thing that is a recurring cost are the student consumables as well as for CPM because they have two part, again, the integrated textbook as well as the general textbook. If any of those get lost, stolen, damaged, we would need to replace those on, on an item this basis. Yes? I'm curious, um, what, is the, uh, what is the average cost, and this is in Frank and answer, um, of a copy in this district? For a uh, for a building, like for a photocopy or to the yes. average cost for a photocopy. Yeah, so, for example, say that you wanted to, you know, photocopy, you know, like a worksheet mm -hmm. uh, that you downloaded. Uh, what what would be the cost? Is it five cents a copy? No. Well, we have a certain number of copies that are included in the contract, and then anything over a certain number is on a per copy basis. But it's less. It's at about, our average is like, it's, it's over a penny a pound. Oh, okay. I was just trying to figure out, you know, however many students, 900 students at Parker times, you know, five classes times 100 days, how many, um, how much FB versus buying one? Oh, you mean photocopy items versus actually buying? Right. I think, you know, based on some feedback that we've heard from parents as well this year, really having that student workbook that students can take home and it's in one location, teachers can flag the page that's for homework that night, is important. Um, yeah, I know that, that logistically, as a parent and a parent, someone who frequently has things jammed at the yeah. bottom of some bag, um, I, I certainly appreciate it. Yeah, and also it might, um, I would have to check on this, but I would assume it would be a copyright issue potentially to copy the work right. or copy material and sound on our own. I have actually crossed that out before just my own crazy neuroses, and it was cheaper to purchase. The 
next is um, each program has um, a, 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 a works in units or modules. So our consultants will work with us to open the module and to end the module. And I plan on being in as many of those PLC meetings as possible to use that as a barometer to see how did the first module go? How are we feeling our students did? Are we feeling overwhelmed by this? But are we feeling like it's actually a good overwhelm that it's working? Um, and what do our assessments say? So I, I would really be using those um, opening and closing of the modules or the units as barometers. And we really will need to pulse check and change up our professional development ongoing. It cannot be a static plan if we find that we need to add dates or we need to do some after school things or we need to pull some side groups together. I want to give us the flexibility to do that. And so teachers don't have to create anything, right? The assessments are built in, everything is. Both programs have built in assessments as well as the technology components as well as um, the unit outline and their daily lessons as well. Are there any more questions? Yeah. yeah, so we'll try to be 
Can I please have a motion to award the food service bid for the 2017-2018 school year to Series B for Okay, 
Yes. Nelson? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Blackman? Yes. Simmons? Yes. Huckabee? Yes. Four. Yes. The motion is passed. Next item, item M, second reading and approval of revised policy for 45 and sufficient fund checks. I have a motion to approve second reading and approval of the revised policy please, for insufficient funds. So, Dr. Gregg, second, Ms. Huckabee. Any questions or concerns? Does anyone need to hear the reading? So essentially the argument 
argument is that some of our construction projects, for example, could be done at a lesser cost to the taxpayers if we weren't required to pay for building. But we are compelled to. We are compelled by law. To pay yeah. for building wage. Yeah. The statute is 820 ILCS 130. The state law is mandatory. Village boards and other public bodies have from time to time adopted ordinances attempting to reject the Prevailing Wage Act. Those that have either, either found themselves in broad litigation or have done solely as a symbolic move and still pay the prevailing wage because they don't want to get sued. I don't think this board has the authority to not follow the Prevailing Wage Act. Um, and even if it did, it would be a little more than symbolic. I believe you are correct. That is a conversation currently going on in Springfield. Uh, our governor would like to get rid of this uh, requirement for boards like this, uh, and legislature just has not uh, budged on the topic. We know that it's been presented by the ISBD to the legislature for at least a decade now. So don't worry about it. Okay, Blackman? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Huckabee? Yes. Paredes? Yes. Grace? Yes. Simmons? No. Fort. Yes, and the motion has passed. Next item, item O, approval of district administration plan. May I have a motion to approve option one of the district administrative plan as presented? So moved. Ms. Huckabee? Dr. Griggs, second. Any questions, discussion? Ms. Torino, can you do a roll call? Please? Okay, Simmons? No. Griggs? Yes. Huckabee? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Blackman? Yes. Paredes? Yes. Fourth? Yes, and the motion is passed. The last item, item P, is for discussion only. Uh, board social with neighboring boards. Uh, so, um, I know Steve had conversations um, during his tenure, and I've certainly um, had neighboring boards to come to me and, and you know suggest is there something we could do together. So this is a, just a discussion item. Steve, I don't know if you had any more background that you want to provide, but this was just an idea to. Um, um, Start working on building better relationships with our neighboring boards. Homewood 153, HS um, board, our library boards, and all the boards that touch our district and the kids in our district. So this was just an opportunity for us to do something that was informal, maybe into the summer. Um, you know, I don't know what could come out of it, but it's certainly um, um, a good big uh, effort to try and start improving those relationships that we have with all of our, our other stakeholders, quite honestly. If this is something that uh, people have approached me about uh, last year, or two years ago even, uh, about yeah, building that intergovernmental relationship and to just really in an informal, indirect way try to strengthen our communication with each other because we're not all um, and operating, you know, separate functions necessarily. You know, the things we do matter to each other, and uh, as much as possible to try to build those relationships and that, that communication. Any other thoughts? There? So, is there a way to structure this? It seems like the idea is a social, formal part of the meeting. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I generally support the idea, but the first challenge is scheduling. So it turns out that Steve Nance, who's the president of the HF board now, he works in my school. We have never seen each other. I've worked in that building for 15 years. So, so uh, scheduling uh, would be a problem, and, and then we have this open meeting that challenge. I think it would have to be a and that they set amongst the various boards, they were, you know, I don't think it's kind of mandatory, it could be over the summer. Um, we have to have a venue for this meeting. And um, even if it was a formal social event, I don't think we could get all that in together, especially since the purpose would be to kind of at least have 
have informal conversations about the proposal work better because that would be important. Well, I think I think that you know, and I was even thinking. I mentioned this um, <coughs> some candidate forum esque sort of thing uh, could happen to Wyoming's grill in the spring. That you know, it'd be great if after the election, everyone who was here came together and didn't talk about the election, didn't talk about you know policies and agendas, but just you know talked and uh, just built relationships. I, I think it is possible uh, for people to get together and not talk about you know what's on the agenda or things that are specific to boards if we all understood that. You know, I mean this is kind of like a you know if there's a it was described to me four years ago that you know if you're at a baseball game with your kid and you're sitting another board member another board member shows up you either have to agree that you only to talk about baseball or one of you really should, you know, put a concession stand or something. And and I think that um, if we were very open about this and you're disciplined to just really don't talk about this, you know, or don't talk about other boards, just talk about our kids, you know, this is a common topic that we all should be able to relate to, um, that we should be okay. Uh, so I guess in that, Light, I think that we should really you know, think about you know, getting together. And, and I don't know that we have to have everybody you know, be there. I just think it's nice if maybe a few people from the floor to get together. And if maybe we look at it as a start as opposed to you know, this, this big event, but we should certainly uh, make efforts to make it very open. And, uh, and, and certainly, you know, people from the community want to come by. Um, and, Meet various, and I think again, this is also something I think was mentioned um, to me before as an idea. That people want to come by and you know, meet their board members. You know, a lot of people have no idea who's on the library board, um, or they don't have any clue who's on uh, the, the HF board or, or the 161 board or the 153 board, um, or the park district. I mean, these are all things that, I, you know, even looking at who's running. A few months ago, I was surprised. Like, oh, I didn't realize so and so was uh, part of it, or that there was a committee for this. So I think, in that regard, it, we could start uh, moving in that direction. Any thoughts? I guess you know, we can continue the conversation.